I was born normal, but at five months old, I started to have convulsions, which were caused by a genetic disorder. Because of the lack of oxygen to my brain, I got brain damage. My disability is mainly physical, which means I cannot walk or sit or do anything on my own. But I am a very clever woman with a photogenic memory. But sadly, this is actually where my long road with hospitals and healthcare began. My disability caused my lungs not to be so strong and I got pneumonia many times. I had to be hospitalized countless times. As part of my disability, I have a speech impairment. I find it very difficult to talk normally. People would think I am stupid because I cannot communicate like a normal person. But I was lucky to have my mother by my side and she would communicate all my feelings and needs to the nursing staff. I was introduced to an A. A. C device called Grid 2. It is a program on my laptop that I use to communicate with. I also have a communication board with which I started communicating. And so a world of possibilities opened up for me. I was very honored to be invited to the four-far course at the University of Pretoria 11 years ago. Here we were taught to use the GRID2 program to its full extent. I have attended this course as a mentor for the last couple of years, and I have learned so much. I was invited to my first motivational speech shortly after the first four far course. I have been invited by different groups like churches, ladies' teas, women's days, golf days and fundraisers to do my speeches since then. It is important that people know that in this funny looking body of mine, there is a normal person with feelings, dreams and the wish to be treated as such. I never realized then how much I would come to rely on my A, A, C device or communication boards then. In June 2021, I had to undergo an operation where doctors implanted a pump in my stomach through which I received medicine to regulate my involuntary movements. As you can remember, it was in the middle of level three COVID lockdown. My mother had to get vaccinated and tested to accompany me to hospital. After the operation, I was admitted to high care and my mother had special permission to stay with me. It helped so much because again she would communicate my needs to the staff. I was released three days later. At home I had a terrible setback and I nearly died. I stopped breathing and my heart stopped twice. It had to be shocked back to rhythm. I had to be rushed to hospital immediately. Unfortunately, the previous day the president declared level 4 lockdown and this meant that my mom was no longer allowed to go with me. I had to go to hospital on my own. I was admitted to ICU and placed on a ventilator for two days until my heart and lungs were stronger. But my biggest fight was not for life but communication. Doctors and staff. My disability was seen as a big obstacle and none of the staff understood my needs. They didn't understand me and talked over me as if I didn't exist. This was very stressful because the ICU personnel didn't know me and I had no way of communicating with them. 
The rules were very strict and no one else was allowed with me. My mom had to do video calls on WhatsApp and explain to them what I needed and wanted. They would not understand my speech and at times I was really frustrated and anxious, which made my movements even worse. Doctors and nurses would talk over me as if I wasn't there. I endured times of hunger, thirst and at times terrible pain because they didn't understand what I wanted or needed. If I could teach the staff something now, I would teach them to ask a lot of specific questions. Like about my medicine. They could have asked me if I would be able to swallow it myself. Also ask very specific questions about my care. Like, do you have pain? Is your pain in your head? Or is it in your stomach? Also, when discussing my medical status or care, please address me directly and look at me. It is after all my medical care that we are talking about. And please be patient when I answer. I am under stress as it is, so just give me a chance to formulate my words. During this time my mom found medical communication board and pain level boards online. These were developed to help people with disabilities during lockdown. There were also boards that would explain my needs like hunger and thirst. She printed these and brought it to the hospital. She explained to the staff how to use it. At least now the staff could ask me questions pertaining to my care. She also explained to them my likes, dislikes, how to give my medicine and how to support me laying in bed. A light at the end of a very dark tunnel. It was still challenging, but at least I could tell them now what I needed. I was in ICU for the longest three weeks of my life. COVID and lockdown proved that disabled persons' needs was not understood or met by the healthcare profession. Lower standards of care were given because of miscommunication. And sadly something as bad as COVID had to happen for the world to realize that there is an enormous need to understand and attend to the need of disabled people. This was now a worldwide goal. I need to see the doctors and hospital staff on a regular basis, now as a follow-up, and to monitor my progress. I decided to make it my job to educate them about disabled people. I let them get to know me and my challenges every time we are there. And I am happy to say we are all friends now. We communicate on WhatsApp and Facebook on a regular basis. They could now see I am a funky woman with a great personality. Ha ha ha. So this is one battle won. Recently I was part of a development and research group that developed specific communication characters for doctors, nurses, hospitals and the explanation of needs and pain levels. I have had a very exciting, challenging life and have made some of my dreams and wishes come true. I am a very positive person and I am living every day to the fullest. I don't know what will come across my path tomorrow, but whatever it is, I am ready. As for my motivational speeches, I still want to continue doing this important task. I want to tell the world about me and people with disabilities and to change their attitude toward us. I strive to do so on a bigger scale too. I truly believe it is a human right to be able to communicate. 
I just wish that people will inform themselves about alternative communication. In the world we live in, where people with different disabilities exist, it is important to at least try and communicate with others that have no voice. It's so sad that the world had to go through a terrible COVID epidemic to show that we are not prepared for people who have speech difficulties or disabilities. So as I continue on this path of educating the world, I am so grateful that I was given this opportunity to come talk to you. I am honored to have had the chance to share my story with you. I hope I made an impact on someone today that would change their view about disabled people. One by one we can make a change in the world we all live in. I thank you.